<clears throat> but once you get born again, your spirit is recreated. God's nature is put into you. Now it has to be lived out. And the more consistent you are at thinking about God's nature and his character, and the more consistent you are about thinking about how God's nature and character can be demonstrated through you, even with your body, then the more your mind is renewed and the more your mind, your quote unquote, your soul and your body move toward holiness and righteousness in alignment with your spirit. All right. Now, when when you get born again, okay, your spirit is a new creation. Your body didn't change. Your soul didn't change, at least not the majority of it. Okay. There was a change in your soul. That's why we call it soul winning, because you have to win the soul to get the spirit changed. Why? Because people that are not, especially, well, many people that are born again are still soul dominated. That's called, generally speaking, that's called carnal minded. Okay? Now, and that's un- unsaved people are pretty much that way. Some saved people are that way. But, Whenever you are a spirit, okay, when you, when you get born again, your spirit gets recreated. And I want to give you the, the next step from that is in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So you go from getting born again to being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, one of the reasons, okay, the primary reason for the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to receive dunamis, miraculous ability, power that comes with the Holy Spirit's Uh, coming upon you, you might say, and overflowing you, being baptized in the Spirit. This is what Jesus talked about in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. So that's what happens. Now, when you get born again, His Spirit takes up dwelling in you. But then, and from there, He is a well of water springing up. So the baptism in the Spirit, say first, okay, if I take this, okay, this is not even half full, okay? But, before this, see, I could take this, and if I had a bucket of water, I could take it, and I could push it under the water. It's not baptized, right? I mean, it is immersed in that sense, but not the way the baptism spirit is talked about in the Bible. First, I'd have to take the lid off, and I'd have to hold it under. First, it would be filled. Then it would be baptized. Does that make sense? So first, there's a filling. Then there's a baptism. Now, after that... Okay, we often need refilling. And they ask, uh, I think it was Ari Tori one time, they asked him, why do you need to be refilled? And he said, because I leak. So <laughs> there you go. Now, but the idea here is this. When you get born again, okay, then you get the Holy Spirit comes into you. But then when you get baptized, you get immersed in him. Now, with that immersion in him, what happens is now, generally speaking, something happens that connects your soul to your spirit and that allows you to make sounds that actually you speak in another language that you never learned, right? And that is called speaking in tongues, okay? It's not some weird thing. It is speaking in other tongues is the voice of the spirit coming through your soul generally. But now understand, when you pray in the spirit, Okay, well, let me give you the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding, my mind, is unfruitful. What is it then? Well, I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with with the understanding also. So now notice he's talking about two different things here. He's talking about talk, speaking in tongues, but also he says, with my understanding. So now notice he said, when you speak in other tongues, your spirit prays, but your understanding is unfruitful. In other words, when your spirit prays and you speak in other tongues, your mind is not getting anything from that. What is, what is it doing? You are building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, You are edifying yourself. The Bible says when you speak in another tongue, you edify yourself. You build up yourself spiritually. So there is a vital reason 
to do that. Now, but now notice this. Now, this is how, well, <clears throat> this is mainly how Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 23, this is how that enlightenment happens, that understanding happens, that wisdom, uh, revelation, that's how that comes usually is through speaking in other tongues. That's the fastest way to make it happen, right? The more you speak in other tongues, the more revelation you receive. In other words, the more understanding, the more enlightenment. It is not um, coincidental that Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, that Paul was known for his revelation, and that the fact that Paul himself said, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. Right? There is a direct correlation between speaking in other tongues and wisdom and revelation. Okay? Now, first off, you might notice that what I'm talking about today, this part, is generally, uh, if you go to a regular church or talk to normal ministers, they will give you advice. Do not talk about tongues at the main service. They will tell you, mm, don't do that. You'll scare people away. <clears throat> you'll run them off. <clears throat> They'll think you're weird, all that kind of stuff. Well, you know what? If you're going to run off for that, let's get it over with. <laughs> Why? Because Paul said, I would that you all spoke with other tongues. Yeah. Amen? And so we need to realize how vital this is. Jesus said he wanted us to have it. He said it's to us, to our children, and to as many as the Lord our God shall call. So every person that names the name of Christ needs to receive the baptism of the Spirit and speak with other tongues. And once you receive the baptism and speak with other tongues, you need to do it as much as you can. Yes. 